to have you this morning at the Fowler Avenue Baptist Church. It is Wednesday morning at 11 o'clock. That's when we meet on Wednesday. And then we meet on Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. These are the two times we meet here at the Fowler Avenue Baptist Church. We have a few folks in the auditorium today and we're glad to have them. And then you out there that are listening to the video, we're thankful that you're tuned in. And uh, last Wednesday, we dealt with the subject of the blood of Christ. And a very interesting study. We took many, many places in scripture where the blood of Christ is mentioned and shows the importance. The Bible says, without the shedding of blood, there's no remission, there's no forgiveness. And all through the annals of Bible history, we find the blood is prominent and, and uh, lifted up. And this is what God had provided for us in the 39 books of the types and shadows of Christ, the Lamb of God that would come one day and die on the cross and be crucified and slain. He would shed his blood. And then on the third day, after they bury him, he will rise again. And that's what is called the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. The fact that according to the scriptures, Jesus died for our sins. He was buried. Third day, he rose again. The Bible says that's the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. The word gospel means good news. And so God wants that good news message to go to all mankind. And Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it's the power of God and salvation to everyone that believeth to the Jew first and to the Gentiles or the Greeks. Therein is the righteousness of God revealed, God's righteousness. Today our subject is righteousness and a very important word. We'll look at a number of verses where we find that word. And uh, we would like to ask you a few questions. Number one, uh, one of the definitions is given from the Bible, what sin is, it says all unrighteousness is sin. Well, if all unrighteousness is sin, what is righteousness? Righteousness is uh, the right standard that has been given in the word of God. And so when someone violates God's righteous standard, his word, then he transgresses, he oversteps God's word, and that brings sin. That's what Adam and Eve did in the very beginning. He says, where is thy one man? Sin entered into the world and death by sin. So death passed upon all men. Death passed upon all men. It came, whereas by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin. So death passed upon all men for all have sinned. So the Bible teaches very clearly that every one of us have a sin problem. And the one that takes care of sin is the one who never sinned. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ. And so again today, we're glad to have you at the Fowler Avenue Baptist Church. And we're meeting today to lift up that tremendous word, the word righteousness, and a tremendous word we find in the scriptures. <clears throat> I'm asking you a question. What, what is the definition of sin? All unrighteousness is sin. What is the color of sin? Can someone tell me the color of sin? I'm going to give you this uh, scripture verse over in uh, Isaiah. Isaiah chapter, let's see. We'll look at Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. The Bible says, come now, not tomorrow, not next week, but come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. And though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. So I know what color this, what color sin is. It's red, crimson, scarlet. The word crimson means it's a very, very bright red, like the blood of Christ. And so the blood of Christ, God's son cleanses from all sin. And so when we come down to this uh, subject we're dealing with today. And uh, over in the scripture, we find that another place in Isaiah we'd like to turn to is a passage that we find the Bible says this. He says, come now. 
Why do we come now? Because tomorrow may be too late. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. Not tomorrow, but today. Don't procrastinate. Don't vacillate. Don't hesitate. The Bible says come to the Lord Jesus Christ right now and receive him as your Savior. When you receive him as your Savior, the Bible says this. For God hath made him Christ to be sin for us. That, he, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. We find that we are made the righteousness of God in Jesus Christ. We're robed in his righteousness. And that's how we're saved and, and sealed by the Holy Spirit of God. And so for assurance, you want to make sure that you go down memory lane to the time and the place where you receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. Today we're going to talk about uh, leprosy. We find that, I looked up the word leprosy, and it's interesting when you, you find that. We find leprosy is like a, a running sore. Uh, and uh, we're going to find over in Leviticus what the Bible says, that the priest had to check the people out to see if they had leprosy. And that's a horrible disease. And it's a disease that it says that it starts out like a running sore. It begins to be scaly, white. And pretty soon it begins to eat away at your members and uh, they become, it's like a, a, a cancerous disease that begins to eat away your flesh. Pretty soon it eats away your hand, your feet, your eyes, your, your, your this is a terrible disease. And so over in the book of Leviticus, we read where the Bible says this about leprosy. And if there be any in the, <laughs> I like this. And if there be any in the bald head or bald forehead, a white reddish sore, it is a leprosy sprung up in his bald head or his bald forehead. Then the priest shall look upon it and behold, if the rising of the sore be whitish red, he is bald headed or in his forehead as the leprosy appeareth in the skin of the flesh. He is a leprous man. He is unclean. He is unclean. The priest shall pronounce him utterly unclean. His plague is in his head. And the leper in whom the plague is, his clothes shall be rent and his head bare. And he shall put on a covering upon his upper lip and shall cry, unclean, unclean. All the days wherein the plague shall be in him, he shall be defiled. He is unclean. He shall dwell alone without the camp. You see, back in the biblical days, that was a ter terrible disease that struck down many people. We find a number of people that had leprosy was Moses' uh, Moses' sister, Miriam. She came, she came down with leprosy because she defied God's anointed. And God had raised up Moses to be the leader and to challenge and instruct the people. But Miriam stood up and defied him and God struck her down with leprosy. We find that Naaman was a tremendous general, a mighty man of valor, but he was a leper. And so we find this idea of leprosy was a loathsome, terrible disease. And they had to, I, I use something here, they had to uh, get something and wrap their uh, leprosy. Like for example, they'd get something and they would wrap the leprosy and try to cover it. And they'd have to stand away. And they would hide unclean, unclean. They were, they were abandoned, you might say. And there was a terrible disease. And so the Bible says, leprosy, a type of sin, and you and I know that the blood of Jesus Christ has cleansed us from that sin principle and, and that sin that works upon us. We find that when someone says, well, I'm trusting baptism for my salvation, God says, unclean. Think of the most horrible, terrible cloth or rag that you can think. You take it off a leper and there there's all the pus and blood and so the stench, the, the smell, the the sight of it was horrible. And when you come to God and say, well, I've been saved because I've been baptized. God says, unclean, unclean. 
You come to God and say, well, I'm trying to keep the Ten Commandments. Unclean. Unclean. In any way you try to say, well, I'm trying to work for my salvation. Unclean. So God wants us to be clean. The Bible says, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. And though they be red like crimson, a bright red like blue. Though they be red like crimson, they should be white as wool. Aren't you thankful that your blood, the blood of Christ has redeemed us and cleansed us from all sin? And we who are leprous had to be standoff and from God. Now we've been brought near or nigh to God by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when we do that, the Bible says it's the blood that has, has sanctified us and redeemed us. A price was paid. And when that price was paid, we find the Bible says his righteousness is put to our account. The Bible says, and I'm going to share this with you, another place, and this is found over in Romans chapter 3, if you want to turn there in your Bible. It pretty well explains what we are and who we are without the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior. You may be very religious. You may be very sincere. You may be very moral. You may be a good person as far as the standard of the world is concerned. We find that when we come to God's standard, we fall very short. We miss the mark. And so the only way to satisfy the righteous demands of Almighty God is to make sure that we've accepted Christ as our Savior. We're not trusting religion or anything like that, water baptism. We are thankful it's the blood of Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ, that cleanses from all sin. But here's the uh, Romans 3, 9. What then? Are we better than they? No, in no wise, for we both, both, both prove both Jew and Gentile, they're all under sin. All of us, whether it be Jew or Gentile, no matter what color, where we come from, all are under sin. He goes to say, as written, there is none righteous. There is none righteous. No, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. Verse 12, they all are gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Verse 13, their throat is an open sulfur. With their tongue, they have used deceit. The poison asp is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. Verse 17, and the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now we know that whatsoever things the law saith, it saith to them that are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. And God says all the world of mankind has been condemned, they've been guilty. Why? Because the sin of Adam and Eve has been imputed or put to our account. And the Bible says all have sinned. We miss the mark. And we need the righteousness of God put to our account. And the only way that can be done is when you come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Say, I don't believe you're just a, a great man, a good teacher, a prophet. I believe you're the son of God. I believe you died and shed your blood and rose again the third day. And Lord Jesus, I want you as my savior. We never know who's watching the video. We don't know what religion you might be serving right now and where you come from. But it's very important. Just take time. Examine yourself. The Bible says, examine yourself to see if you be in the faith, the right belief system. Because many of us, and I was one like that. I was a Baptist for many years. And I would tell people, I, I was a wet Baptist going straight to hell. I did what Baptists do. I come to church. I paid my tithe. I tried to sing the choir. I was teaching class of junior boys. And so I was a good Baptist. But at night when you close your eyes and the question begin to ask, if you died today, would heaven be your home? And the only answer is this, you've got to say, well, if I do not have Jesus Christ as my personal savior, heaven will not be my home. I'll spend eternity in the flames of the damned with Satan, the false prophet, and the Antichrist. And we find that that's what hell was prepared for. We mentioned last week, I believe it was, that hell is in the heart of the earth the day that Jesus went to hell. He that descended into hell, as he also ascended and went up to the third heaven. Jesus Christ liberated 
that section in the heart of the earth where the unsaved would go in the Old Testament. Now there's a place also where the Bible says that he released those that were in that section of pain and sorrow, they're still there. But over there where that man went in paradise, the garden of God, Christ went there where that thief was. When Jesus hung that day on the cross and two thieves, one accepted him, said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus said, this day you shall be with me. Where? In paradise. At that time, in the heart of the earth. As John was three days and three nights in the fish's belly, Christ was three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. He that descended into the lower parts of the earth is also him that ascended and rose. And they went into the third heaven, which is the, the paradise of God. So I'm thankful to know that when we die as a Christian, we do not go down to the heart of the earth. But after this old body, soul and spirit goes immediately to be with the Lord Jesus Christ in paradise, the garden of God. And we need to have that assurance. We need to know that about the righteousness of God. And so we're going to read this and it says this. He says, all the world may become guilty before God. Verse 20, therefore by the deeds of the law, there shall be no flesh justified. The word justified declared righteous. No flesh shall be justified or declared righteous. You know why? It says this. It says, for the law is the knowledge of sin, but now the righteousness of God without Law is manifested being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the rights of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all that believe in him. For there is no difference. All have sinned. All of us have sinned and come short. We miss the mark. So all of us have the same need. We need the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior. God's not concerned about your religion. God's not concerned about the flag you're trying to fly. God's concerned if you know his son is your savior. And so you've got to answer that question. Can I go back to a time and a place? I know that I know I received Christ. I asked him to come to my heart and save my soul. Now some of you watching, you need to examine yourself. We need to look into our heart. Like I had to that day, I said, when I came down to the from the church that day, my pastor's name was Bab Adams. And the Bab says, what are you doing here? I said, well, I'm coming to take a stand. I'm not trusting the church. I'm not trusting religion. I'm not trusting the preacher. I'm trusting Jesus Christ as my savior. Now back there, October the 4th, listen, I might've been saved when I came that first time, but I wasn't sure. And I'd lie there at night doubting, am I really saved? Do I really know Christ? I'm not sure. Why not just go ahead and nail it down and get it set for the day? I'm not questioning yourself. I think so. I hope so. No, no. The Bible says these things are written that you might know that you have eternal life. And this life is in his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. It goes on to say this. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. We've looked at Isaiah 64, 6. Now we're going to go to Romans 3, which we just got through reading. And now we're going to a man by the name of Abel. And we have an outline there that we pass out to our people. And uh, there's about probably, oh, let's see. Probably, let's see. How many, seven or eight things we give here concerning that. It's really good about righteousness. The righteousness of God. And we go to the uh, number one, Adam and in Christ in relation to righteousness. Adam's transgression, he overstepped the boundary of God's law. Do not eat that tree, he overstepped that. He became conscious, he became condemned. He needed to be justified. The Bible says, God's declaration of rights, God's grace gives a sinful man, God's free gift of righteousness through Jesus Christ. God has made Christ to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteous of God in him. Christ is our righteousness, our right standard. And when you receive him, he kept the law for us. He kept it every jot, every tittle. Jesus kept it. And when you receive Christ, in God's eyes, the law has been fulfilled in Christ when he redeemed us.
from our sin and gave us his righteousness, tremendous truth. And so we have Cain and Abel. Over in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4, it says this. By faith, Abel, that day when God said to Cain and Abel, you can't go much further back to Adam and Eve when Adam and Eve sinned that day and hid themselves behind a tree and sowed fig leaves to cover their nakedness. And God says that won't work. And God slew an animal. I believe it was a lamb. And he took the skins off of those animals and he robed Adam and Eve. And you can't go back farther than Adam and Eve concerning righteousness. It was a type and a picture of God's righteousness that would be shed and given to us through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so God robed them with the right with that that shit, that skin of the lamb. And the Lamb of God came at the appointed time. The Bible says when we receive him, we're robed in his righteousness. But then you come to Cain and Abel. Now Cain was a very great farmer, a tiller of the ground, the Bible says. We have two of the names of Adam and Eve's children. There were many of them. But God gives these two and he lifts them up. He says, I want you to look at Cain and Abel. You've already looked at Adam and Eve. God had to put the skins upon them to cover their nakedness. A picture of Christ's righteousness. Well, I want to tell you something. Cain and Abel does the same thing. Cain brought all the beautiful crops and said, Lord, here they are. And God says, thumbs down. That is not what I desire. That's not what I recommend. Abel came. The Bible says he brought an offering as a lamb. And God says, thumb up. He goes on to say in the different places, it says, Cain's offering was of that wicked one and God would not accept it. And any time when someone comes and says, well, I've been baptized and I'm saved, God says, unclean, unclean. You say, well, I'm trying to keep the Ten Commandments, unclean. I'm trying to do good and give, unclean. You must receive Christ as your personal savior to get God's righteousness put to your account. Isn't that wonderful? And by the way, we cannot buy it. We do not deserve it. We can't earn it. Or bring, or by grace are we saved through faith that not a, it's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. I'm so thankful to report to you today that God's righteousness, his righteousness, says over in Hebrews, by faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. Abel was a righteous man because he obeyed and did that which God had asked him to do, to bring an offering. And that would be the blood of the Lamb. And you and I, when we receive Christ as our Savior, God's righteousness is put to our account. And when we could come, the blood of Christ now brings us near, and we've accept, been accepted in the Beloved. Tremendous truth. It goes on to say Matthew 23, that upon you may all the righteous blood be... The, it says that now yet speaketh, though he be dead, yet he speaketh. That upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth. From the blood of righteous Abel, John, 1 John 3. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one of Satan, slew his brother. And wherefore slew him, because his own works were evil. And his brother's works were righteous. So we don't know what righteous, all unrighteousness is. Righteousness is... Righteous is, is obeying the standard and the rule that God has given. And when you receive Christ, his righteousness is put to your account. Tremendous truth, a precious truth. And so we want to just say today, we're glad that you've come, that we might just lift up some verses. I'm going to share a few of them with you in closing about the righteousness of God. The Bible says this concerning righteousness. Over in Matthew 5, 20, it says... I say to you, except your righteousness shall exceed the rights of the Pharisees, scribes and Pharisees, you shall no case enter into the kingdom of God. The Pharisees, for the most part, would go out and pray long prayers like they'd been fasting and so forth. And they did this to please the people. It says, with your mouth, you claim and say, I'm righteous. I'm, uh, God is my father. And God says, you're not, God, I'm not your father. You of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father, you will do. All these people who are trusting something else other than the blood of Christ, 
he says, it's filthy rags. Filthy rags. Unclean. Unclean. But when you come to Christ, we've been cleansed by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. What a beautiful type and illustration that God gives to us about that. Here's another verse on this matter. 11. By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testing, testified our gifts, and by being, he, even though he's dead, yet he's dead, yet his testimony speaks out. It's the blood of Christ. That is what God accepts. We go to another one. Romans 5, 19. For by one man's disobedience, that was Adam, many were made sinners. But by the obedience of one, that's Christ, many shall be made righteous. For he, God has made him Christ to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be, be made the righteous of God in him. In him, we've been made righteous before God. That thief on the cross, that day he said, Lord, remember me. He says, this day, you will be in paradise because God's righteousness put to his account by believing on Christ. Beautiful pictures and types. We come on down to another one. The Bible says this. Knowing this first, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but the law was given by Moses. Why? It's given for the lawless, the disobedient, the ungodly, and for sinners, the unholy, profane, murderers, fathers, mothers, for men slayers, for the unrighteous. That's why the Lord Jesus Christ gave his son. Over in 1 John 2, 1 and 2. My little children, these things I write unto you. That you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate, the Lord Jesus Christ. For the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. For he is the propitiation. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sin. And so the word picture illustrates this, that when you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, not just believing he's a good man, he's a great teacher, he was a martyr, I believe he's the very Son of God who died for me and shed his blood. The Bible says he by the grace of God has tasted death for every man. The wage of sin is death. And he died that death. And the price that was paid was his precious blood. And that blood declares that we have been made righteous before God. There's so many verses here on this great subject of righteousness. Righteousness. I want to share just one or two more and we'll close. Romans 4, 5, and 6. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Even as David also described blessed the man in whom God imputeth righteousness without works. Titus chapter 3, verse 5. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Over in Ephesians 2. For by grace are you saved, through faith, that not of yourself. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. With the heart, the Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For the, for the mouth confession is made unto sin for righteousness. You and I receive Christ as our Savior. We have righteousness of God put to our account. We've been redeemed. We've been saved. By the grace of God, by the power of God. And that's the message we share with you today. Last, well, last uh, Thursday, it was the blood of Christ. And that blood described that you and I have been made righteous because we've accepted and had the blood of Christ applied to our sin. Aren't you glad you're saved? But you may not be saved out there. You're watching, observing. We always close our, our little service here on, on, on Thursday morning. We close it by just saying, will you look into your heart and go down memory lane to the time and place that you know? Do you really know that you've been saved? I'm not asking you're religious or you've been baptized. I'm saying, where do you know that you've asked Christ to really come to your heart and save you? 
If not, you can do it today. Pray this simple prayer. Oh God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I know I'm lost. And Lord Jesus, I know you died and shed your blood. And I want you to come into my heart and save me. I believe you died and rose again on that third day. I accept you. I believe you. Today I'm driving a stake down. This is the day I'm asking you to save me from my sin. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Now, Father, help me and help our congregation of people go out to the ends of the world, starting with our family, and tell them about the love of God, the grace of God, and the salvation of God that's found in the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. So glad to have each of you here today.